and all you married folk, happy anniversary. And we celebrate those commemorating sobriety. March is abundant with celebrations. We have National Celery Month, National Peanut Month, Red Cross Month, Irish American Heritage Month, Nutrition Month, and last but certainly not least, International Women's History Month. <laughs> but today is National Oreo Day. So eat an Oreo or two as you choose to join the Women and Girls Ministry and the Fellowship Circle in Reading, The Noticer by Andy Andrews. It's a story of people struggling with personal problems and failures, but after an encounter with an old and mysterious drifter named Jones, they have renewed hope and a new perspective on life. If you're interested in joining us in reading, please contact Ernestine Daniel, Dara Sanders, or Janice Vogel. This is our month, ladies. Remember, nothing is more powerful than a woman determined to rise. Corinthians, we are one in the Lord, but be blessed and safe as always. Amen.
for our scripture reading this morning. Our scripture reading comes from Isaiah, the 64th chapter, verses 1 through 9. Again, our scripture for this morning comes from Isaiah, the 64th chapter, verses 1 through 9. And if we can stand at this time, we give reverence to the Lord as we read this word. If only you would tear the heavens open and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence. Just as fire kindles brushwood and fire boils water to make your name known to your enemies so that nations will tremble at your presence. When you did awesome works that we did not expect, you who came down and the mountains quaked at your presence. From ancient times, no one has heard no one has listened to. No eyes have seen any God except you who acts on behalf of the one who waits for him. You welcome the one who joyfully does what is right. They remember you in your ways. But we have sinned and you were angry. How can we be saved if we remain in our sins. All of us have become like something unclean, and all our righteous acts are like a polluted garment. All of us wither like a leaf, and our iniquities carry us away like the wind. No one calls on your name, striving to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us, made us melt because of our iniquities. Yet, Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are the power. We all are the work of your hands. Lord, do not be terribly angry or remember our iniquity forever. Please look, all of us, are your people. Yes, Lord God's holy and righteous word. Amen. Amen. Amen.
need a touch from you. Shine down on us with the light of truth. Stir our hearts and set our spirits free. Holy Spirit, come fill this place. Fill each heart, fill each life with the reality of your presence. God, we thank you for the gift of life on this day. We thank you for another opportunity to gather in your name and with your people. In your house, the Corinthian Baptist Church in Germantown. Have your way. Send your word and heal us, we pray. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, for you are our strength and our most blessed redeemer. Let us all say, Amen. 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 And Amen. Let's give God one hand of praise. Proceed in our worship experience this morning. Amen. Now, good night to God. Since uh, Sister Miles did the, the professional thing this morning. Giving out to God who was the first in my life. Amen. Amen. To all of our pulpit associates, deacons, elders, members, family, and friends. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It is a good morning, isn't it? Amen. I'm glad to see y'all. It's been a while since I've seen some of you. And uh, you look just as well as you did the last time. Amen. Before we get to the uh, word this morning, I just would like to um, emphasize a few things that were um, talked about earlier. Uh, we know that uh, this is the first Sunday in the month of March where we acknowledge all of the birthdays and wedding anniversaries and sobriety dates and all those types of things, as well as Women's History Month and all of the other designations for this month. But I want to take time to recognize um, one couple this morning that I was made aware of whose wedding anniversary is this morning. And that's our very own Deacon and Mrs. Mack. Amen?
good looking folks. And you were wondering who they are. Well, this is my family here in Rhode Island. living 
and God's kingdom. But then, out of nowhere, an unknown virus named Corona led to a global crisis. A whole world had to shut down. And America had a four-week national quarantine. And it was at that time, y'all, that God began to restore the church's spiritual vision. The church began to embrace the fact that the eyes of our heart have truly been enlightened by the Holy Spirit. So we're now beginning to see, we're now beginning to understand what is the hope of His calling. In, in other words, y'all, it wasn't until a crisis emerged that affected everybody that some of us began to see stuff that had been other people's reality the whole time. Amen. You know, some of us don't get stuff until it gets personal. The economy. Inflation. Unemployment. It wasn't until the virus hit that we began to understand that poverty is a public health issue. I said poverty is a public health issue. This, this pandemic exposed the structural racism that had already existed in our country. It, it helped us to see the health and wealth disparities in our nation. It helped us to see the avoidable and unnecessary death of people because of the inequitable distribution of resources. Somebody say, thank God for Dr. Ava Stanford. Creation, but our God is also 
verse 4. I want you to look at it with me again. Isaiah 64, verse 4, he says, From ancient times. That means from back in the day, y'all. From ancient times. No one has heard. No one has listened to. No eye has seen any God except you. Listen. Who acts on behalf of the one who waits for him. The text says that there's no God like our God. Listen, who acts on behalf of those who wait for him. How, how many of you know that God wants to blow our mind?
Just look at the person next to you. Don't say nothing. Just look at them.
in some kind of way. That, that's why I preached to you a few, few weeks ago, I can't remember now, to keep pushing. Push. Pray until something happens. Pray until something happens. Let's look at somebody else and say, push, push. Push, push.
great painter, Michelangelo, came across a block of marble.
Because we still believe that God acts on behalf of those who waits for him. I'm going to encourage you to keep waiting on God for your breakthrough this morning.
you should. Because there is a God. But there's a big difference between knowing that God exists and being in a personal relationship about, with that God. It's one thing to know that the 44th president was Barack Hussein Obama. But it's another thing for you to have his phone number and he has yours. Well, God is extending an invitation this morning for you and I to come in a personal relationship with God through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He came that you may have life, that you might be forgiven of your sins, and given a new lease and purpose on life. That you will become a citizen of his kingdom. And an instrument of righteousness in his hand. The Bible says, whosoever believes and is baptized shall be saved. Is there one this morning?
rite of renewal, where we remind ourselves and celebrate all that the Lord has done for us in securing our salvation through our great Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so as we prepare to go to God's table today, the Bible says that we ought to examine ourselves so that we will not take of God's table unworthily. And the point there is not to discourage you to come from the table. And some folks say, oh, I can't take communion today. And that's a choice you may make. But the apostles' words there were not designed to keep you away from the table. The apostles' words were to encourage us to examine ourselves so that we can repent and come to the table. Because if we truly understand the table, the table is not about condemnation. The table is about forgiveness. The table is about reconciliation. The table is about getting right in our fellowship with God. And so, if you first me here to ask that you lead us in the word of prayer as we prepare. Amen. All praise and worship to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Dear Lord, I ask that you look upon these worldly elements, transfigure them to spiritual elements. Bless them so they may be used in our communion service this day. As the Lord said to Moses in Leviticus 18, 4 and 5, Ye shall do my judgments and keep my ordinances to walk therein. I am the Lord your God. I am the Lord your God. Keep my, de keep my devices and laws, my decrees and laws, and the man who obeys them will live by them. I am the Lord. Amen. Amen. The Bible says that on the night that our Lord and Savior Jesus was betrayed, he sat at dinner with his disciples and he took bread and broke it. He said, this is my body which is broken for you.
meal. He took the cup. He said, this cup is the blood of the new covenant, which was shed for you. As often as you drink this cup, you do proclaim my death until I return. Let us drink together. The Bible says that after they had eaten and after they had drank, they sang a hymn. And after the singing of the hymn, they went out rejoicing to the Mount of Olives. And so today we're going to sing one verse of the hymn. And at that point, consider yourselves dismissed or rejoicing as you wait on God for your blessing.